Hello, OpenIPC, very exciting technology and I've already done a few videos on it. I'm going to do another one today and that's because Ishin has released their own version of their VTX and receiver. And you kind of know when things are becoming more mass market when Ishin is bringing something out, famously like low cost. So this is the first look, I'm going to see what's in the box. I'm going to connect it up and make sure it can transmit video and how that looks. And then in subsequent videos, I'll obviously be taking it for a fly. There's a lot happening yet again in OpenIPC. One of the things happening at the moment is uh, Emacs and Runcam bringing out Google modules. So at the moment, people are generally shipping like this Wi-Fi adapter that will plug into a tablet. But there's there's a bit more latency on a tablet and in my experience it seems to sort of freeze when there's a little bit of distortion on the picture instead of just sort of going through it. So that's exciting and that will obviously be compatible with all this stuff. Everything is compatible with everything, that's the main thing. There are a couple of options on this one. You see we've got some little ticks on the boxes there. Banggood described this as being single core or dual core. So the SSC338Q, which is one I'm useful to, being the dual core and the SSC30Q, no, the SSC30KQ being single core. It's either going to be the IMX415 or the IMX335 sensor and this one comes with the RX. You don't have to have it with the RX. So the cheapest version you've got there for the camera and VTX is under 40 quid. It's 38 pounds something, which is pretty good, I think. Anyway, let's go to close up and let's get this out of the box and then get set up. Okay, so let's do a quick unboxing here. In the box, we have some instructions. And these are actually pretty good. There's lots of links to the OpenIPC uh, wiki and GitHub site. There's the general info about how to connect it up if you're using a tablet. Some stuff there about Betaflight. And importantly, we've got the pinouts here, which is really useful, and the default settings. So well done there. The most documentation I've ever had. Okay, so in this first layer, we've got the receiver. It's not too bad at all, actually. It's, uh, Feels 3D printed the case, and I think this is the same sort of receiver as we generally get. A couple of uh, rubber duck antennas there to go on. Got a bunch of some screws and bolts and a little heat sink. More there. I think that's still mounting hardware essentially. Bunch of cables to hook things up. Very nice. Uh, some antennas in there as well. Then in this section we have got the VTX board and this is very interesting you've got the uh, little fan there but underneath it's it's quite interesting how they've mounted it in order to fit it in this and I believe this is a 30.5 mil they've diagonally mounted the Wi-Fi adapter so it doesn't have to extend further than it, it would do because obviously if it was round straight that would be right in the way of the board there so that is an interesting idea quite clever We've got the camera here and we've got a heat sink separately on the camera, which I've not seen before. I tend to think of the boards uh, heating up a lot rather than the camera, but there you go. Quite an interesting idea. Feels like we've got another, is this the same size? Yeah, we've got a spare uh, mount for the camera. Should we break something there? And the all important ethernet adapter to actually hook this thing up to a computer and configure it. So there's all the pieces. I've already got, obviously, uh, some receivers that I can hook up to HDMI, and this one I can obviously hook up to, well, either something like an MVR board or a tablet. So I'll be looking to do that. So let's get this set up, just uh, basically powering up the camera and see what we can do and see how much configuration it takes to get a picture. So I've just plugged everything in and tried to see if this would connect to a tablet. Uh, which is on channel 161 because it said it was paired through key pairing by default but it doesn't seem to work for me this is a new install of pixel pilot so it should be fine i've got an actual key on this one so i think i'm gonna go ahead and put my key over to see if it connects better okay so i've just plugged my camera in on the floor and the camera does get pretty hot so i've got a fan going there and i've found the IP address of this so I'm just going to SCP over my drone key because I've already got drone keys set up for my stuff. Now of course if you're on Windows you can use the 
open IPC configurator, especially if you don't like the command line. And I went over that in my video about MSP OSD. There is, I think, a multi operating system version of the open IPC configurator coming out. So that'd be nice. The other thing I know is by default, we have a resolution of 1920 by 1080. I'm going to change that to 1280 by 720. And that's just because that's what my MVR likes. And I've got a particularly rubbish tablet. So I want to give it at least amount of work as possible. As said, you can do all this through the configurator. Look at my last video for that one. But I'm going to now uh, plug in the tablet and see if we get a picture. OK, this is a new message for me. Identifying flight controller. Uh, obviously, I haven't got a flight controller plugged in at the moment. But I have got the camera which is upside down, hang on, let's turn me over. Here I am, filming awkwardly with my phone. That's interesting, this is obviously a new thing. Things move pretty fast, so we can't identify the flight controller because there's nothing plugged into it. There is a nice little UART bit for this, which is this bit here. So we've got ground, TX and RX, so we can hook that up. Other than that, I like what this is doing, that's nice. One thing I would say about this is it's working brilliantly not a problem there i just like a red light or a light something to say yes this is powered on and working else it's all a bit of a mystery but it certainly works fine and pixel pilot certainly tells you if it's going to go or not so let me see if i can get myself a flight controller and plug in some data and we we'll see if we've got some msp osd coming through well that looks a bit better doesn't it what i've done i found this flight controller which is attached to this uh, ESC board, which is obviously running from this battery. A little bit here for Robertson, we're collecting with a bunch of crocodile clips over to the TX and RX of the camera. Um, obviously, I set this up as MSP OSD on Beatflight. Again, that same video about user configurator also tells you about setting up MSP OSD. And you can see we've got our uh, battery voltage is there, 3.8, because these batteries are storage. Um, obviously, I haven't connected a receiver so that's flashing away i would have done but uh, i noticed my my red wire has come out so that's not pairing up these are just spare bits about but that's it that is a pretty easy setup just with this and obviously i can run this on an nvr board or as many people are doing with a redaxa 03w i just bought a couple of these i thought i'll build myself a proper ground station i can mount my goggles and sod's law both emacs and run camera uh, just about to release theirs so we'll be looking at those but i'll build one of these as well just to see what it is it's, uh, it's like but yeah all working fairly painless uh, operation to get this all going and we seem to have a fairly good image from the camera and for this quite rubbish um tablet not bad latency but yeah I'll, I'll run this on something better so yeah we'll be installing this on a quad for next time flying it around with my other open ipc quads hopefully we'll have a better ground station recording experience by then well this was remarkably easy to get set up if you compare it to my earlier videos on open ipc i think i did one which was over an hour long explaining how to do things breaking into bootloaders reflashing firmware doing all sorts of weird connections and then you just get this which is beautifully put together it already has open ipc installed it already has msp osd installed it's just a case of putting one file over and changing another and i was good to go at first i didn't notice quite how compact this was and when i was thinking about how to install it. I thought, hang on a sec, there's something very different about this. And I'll tell you what it is. If you compare it to my very early uh, DIY jobs, this is a sort of security camera I got from AliExpress. You get the camera, you get the camera board, you get the uh, Wi-Fi chip, and then there's like a bunch of regulators to run it. And it's kind of the same even on the commercial things. This is the uh, Emacs big thing. I call it, as opposed to the small one. You've got the camera board here, the camera obviously there, and this is the Wi-Fi board on top because there's two boards. With the Runcam Wi-Fi link, you've got this big section of back fan board and other board. It's a two board system. The odd one out in this rule is the Emacs where it's got this single board, amazing little thing which connects to the camera. I think that's really good. But this as well is a single board system. There's just the Wi-Fi board and a fan all the guts of the computing power is on the back of the camera, which I think is pretty cool because I've never been able to fit these in comfortably before. And this, because they've cleverly angled 
the Wi-Fi adapter. This will fit in a regular 30.5mm stack if you've got about that much room left or it can easily go behind. So that's pretty damn neat, I have to say. Obviously, I'll be taking this out for a fly as soon as I can. I've been waiting quite a while. I've got a lot of stuff to get flying uh, because the weather's never been good or I've been out of the country or something like that. So I'm looking forward to flying this along with my other stuff and maybe trying out a Redaxa and less the goggle module stuff from Emacs or Runcam gets here quickly. But uh, yeah, expect to see this going on a quad and uh, we'll check it out from there. This was kindly supplied by Banggood and there'll be links down below in the description to let you know where you can check it out in more detail. I hope that's been helpful and I will catch you next one. Bye for now. Well, you've made it to the end of the video, so thanks once again for watching. If you like what you saw, then please consider subscribing. And if you really like what you saw, then be sure to check out the link to my blog for a variety of ways in which you can help support this channel.